Well, good day everybody and welcome from Cape Town. Roland here from Long Tom SA and we'll have a look today as you can see at the Kylan Mini RTA. Uh, it is no secret that I'm a huge fan of top airflow single coil atomizers. So this obviously was a must buy for me. So I got it the other day, put it through, had a bit of a rape on it and uh, I thought I'll show it to you. Comes in a box like this, and there she is. It comes with a coil cutting tool. Let's take this out. Easier said than done. It also comes with a straight glass because it is packed with a bubble glass, which you can see is a bit condensed because I just cleaned it out. Let's put that to one side. Comes with a coil cutting tool, which is marked at seven millimeters. Here you go. And then underneath the felt pad, it comes with a baggie full of stuff. It's mostly um, rings. It's an eight ten to five ten adapter. It is flat hat grub screws. Why would you put platinum cup screws in here? Who wants that? And it is uh, an Allen key. Then it also comes with a coil. And uh, very, very good. They actually said what coil it is. It is a dual fuse Clapton 2432 with six wraps. Comes out at three ohms. Shall we use that? Yeah, let's use that today. So that's what we're going to put in. Comes with a quality certificate. And then it comes with, let's find the English instruction manual. This looks very Russian. Here we go. Then it comes with the instruction manual. Gives you a nice explosion of what is in there. Uh, tells you how to prime your coil and uh, the normal warnings. So that's about it. This would be your instructions. All in a very complicated folding kind of arrangement. And that's it. That's in the, that's in the box. We don't need that. We don't need that. We don't need that. We don't need that. Put that all to one side and we can have a look at this. So there she is, the Kylan Mini 2. And right from the bat off, it looks a bit like a pregnant hosepipe. Um, uh, I will put the straight glass on it. I know it doesn't have that much capacity with the straight glass, and uh, even if, you know, if it comes to Cumbersome, I'll put the bubble glass back on, but for aesthetic reasons, I will put the straight glass on in a minute. To start with, it comes with an 810 drip tip. It's just a normal black 810 drip tip, and you know what? I love this drip tip. I hate these drip tips, which are just, you know, short like that, and you have to have your chicken lips around that. I hate that. It's really just, you know, so this is a normal, proper size drip tip, probably. 10 millimeters, I would say, around about 10, 12 millimeters high. Perfect. It is a normal 810 connection. It has the O-ring inside, so any other Gunn style 810 drip tip will fit in perfectly. It has the airflow over here on top, and this is how you open and close it. Let's get a bit closer so you can see that it opens and closes. It's a nice thing about the stainless steel edition. You can actually see the matte black. It's always a bit difficult. There we go. So that is that. Disadvantage is the light glares a bit. But here we go. Then it obviously has the bubble glass and then the bottom. Should we take it apart? Yes, it has a top fill. And that is a screw top fill. And then it has this deep... Um, juice entry, which uh, 
It's interesting, so you obviously you can't get your bottle right into those kidney holes, but you don't need to. You probably fill it up like that, and the juice actually can go up a little bit in this as well, adds to the capacity, especially when you have to work with a straight glass, which I will do in a minute. Right, so there's your airflow control, stoppers on both sides, opens and closes up. What happens on one side happens on the other. Then uh, let's uh, take the bottom off. I must say that the uh, threading feels fine. Here we go, we'll have a look at that right now. Let's take the glass off. All right, the airflow ring also comes off, which I presume not the idea. So glass is quite tight because it has an O-ring at the top and at the bottom. But we got it off. Here we go. Put it in the baggage. Leave it off for the time being. Put the airflow ring back on again. Here we go. Here we go. Hooked in. Right. You see the chimney right over here. Let's go a bit closer. There it is. Not really domed. You, these two holes you see on top there. Right over there and right over there. These are your air holes. And uh, right over there and right over there. These are your juice holes. Right, so how does this work? Well, let's have a quick look at the deck, shall we? You see the deck over here. You put it in like that. The air comes in from the air holes on the sides and then through the side holes over here and also underneath because as you can see the airflow is all around your coil. So that's quite interesting, isn't it? Right. So this is the deck of the Kylan M. It kind of has a what they call a 270 degree airflow, so air all around the coil which means even for a single coiler you probably can put quite a bit of heat through it because this air will certainly, or should certainly cool it down. Right, let's put the straight glass on. Just show you how that works. Very easy, just pop it in. That's it. Actually the fit, fit and finish on this is not bad at all. Not bad at all. Right, then I would suggest you pop the coil in here. Let me let me grab a let me grab some platform to put the coil on. There we go. With the old trusty gin. Now when you put on the coils you will see there is one issue with this because of the special airflow it has means that this needs to be able to rotate. And it does. It also does when you install the coils. So that can sometimes be, you know, pain in the in the rear. But yeah, little things which we will learn to live with. Right, let's make sure that we have the screws unscrewed here. Right, then we take out the coil which came with it. Fuse Clapton. Not the prettiest fuse clapton I've seen, but it is obviously 32 gauge wound, so it looks a bit rough, but it looks perfectly done. It just uh, it doesn't look like a 36 uh, gauge wound coil. Right, then let's uh, listen to the advice of the instructions and cut it at 7 millimeters. Here we go, I take the coil cutting tool, just put the coil in here, hold it here with my thumb, turn it around, and then I cut it flush with my coil cutting tool. Right. Now you will see here, let's get this out of the way so we can focus on here. Talking about focus, maybe we can just zoom in a bit better. Here we go. You see, you can? Good. You can see here that you have to have your coil wound counterclockwise. And I don't know why companies do I would really love to know why companies do that. 
Well, if you only want to put two holes in because the construction of your deck doesn't allow for four holes, why have it counterclockwise? Why not have it clockwise? 90% of the people are right-handed and they're wound their, clock, their coils clockwise. If you buy coils, they are wound clockwise. Why having the holes in for counterclockwise coils? Right, right over. Then we put this in here. That fits in quite nicely. There we go. Just hold it there with our index finger. We screw down the first leg. And we hold it. Now, if you don't hold it with your index finger, then this happens. You know, this thing starts turning. So you have to hold it somehow. Right. Now let's take a tool of sorts and just bend this coil into place. And the height is given by the seven millimeters. So what you're looking at is the coil is around about two millimeters below. And this is a three millimeter coil. So you know. 3 millimeter. This is a 3 millimeter coil, and uh, yeah, that's more or less where it sits. If you look here, it sits around about, I would say, a millimeter and a half from the top edge. You do that, get a pretty good idea. And uh, you just center it here from the top, which it pretty much looks now. It is centered, then obviously we need to glow it. Where are we here? The dead watch should be fine. Just slowly pump some power through it. We are a bit hot spotty here, so let's just give it a bit of a rake. So it looks like we're getting there. Let it cool down again. Let's give it a bit of a. Now we're certainly heading glowing from the inside out. Which obviously is what we want, so let's let it cool down for a minute. It doesn't say what material it is, but there see, appears to be some stainless steel involved, looking at the color here of the coil. I turned blue. Right. Now we take some cotton. it through, settle in here, then we cut the cotton. And the way I would like to cut the cotton here is if you, the cotton must go into between these two poles. Let me have a look. You see that? Here we go. That's the problem when you zoom in so much, you're out of camera and a shot. You see this gap here? That's where the cotton has to kind of be formed in. So let's let's get more or less an idea where we want to cut it. So we just give the cotton a bit of a mark here. Then we take our scissors and we cut it there. Same on this side. Give the cotton a bit of a mark. You see, that's how you want the cotton to fit in. And We cut it there. Right. Let's get rid of stuff which we don't need. Now, obviously, it will be kind of very difficult, not to say impossible, to get the cotton in here. This still seems to be a bit longish. It's just between it. You see, I'm not gonna. I'm not going to comb it out. I'll see if I get it in without combing out the cotton. I'm not a fan of combing out if not necessary. Obviously, sometimes 
need to convert that. But these holes look fairly big, so let's let's see if you get away with it without coming it out. You need to pre-wet uh, pre it because you cannot form the cotton in, in a dry state. So you need to give it a good soaking. At the same time, let's just let the cotton soak in from this side as well. I have some blue rush here, which is one of my favorites fruit juices, and I think single coil, it is like this one, are the ones to use for a fruit juice profile, the savories and uh, the chocolates and the cookies and that kind of stuff. I'd rather do on a dual coil, I find that works for me. Right, now we need to get the cotton in here. We need to form it in. It is uh, nicely soaked. So what is happening is you kind of work it into this hole here. The same on this side. Work it into the hole. So you kind of fill that hole with cotton. It looks pretty good on this side. On this side, it looks like I have slightly too much cotton. So don't be, you know, take the extra second or two which you need to retrim your cotton. Oh, get it about right. Right, let's work it back down again. There we go, Idaho. Just nicely work it in. Lay it in, form it in, whatever you want to call it, between these two airflow walls. And at the end, it looks a little bit like this, and the other side like this. Then, obviously, once you put the lid on, it will then all be, you know, formed into the right shape. So, let's do that. Let's put the lid on. You remember the airflow holes, which must come down there on the side, so you kind of line it up like that. Fill it in. That, that worked quite nicely. Then you screw it closed. Wipe off the mess you just made. Yeah, Roland, that will be one. There we go. Let's put it back on our legend. And we never looked what the coil came out to. Coil came out at 0.32. So that's not bad. They said it's going to be coming out at around about 0.3. Right, now we fill it up. Let's see how that works. You have seen that funny fill port here. And obviously the glass is pretty close to the chimney, so the juice will not necessarily easily flow in. But it's not too bad. It's not too bad. Here we go. Now you see the juice coming past the fill holes over there. That's not a problem at all, because you have these deep, for whatever reason, you have these deep hole to the fillers. That's that's basically it. Put the lid on, which is a screw lid. Would have wished for a bayonet, but it isn't. And uh, there you go. Let's have a look at our airflow. Let's crank it fully open. Oh, now it's 38. Certainly needs more heat. That worked well. All right, I would suggest that we have it here. We have the Kylan Mini version 2 RTA, wicked up, coiled up, juiced up, ready to rock and roll. And let's meet upstairs and uh, have a quick talk what I like and don't like about it. Cheers, guys. Thanks.
Right, and here we are back on top uh, talking about the Kylan Mini version 2. Here she is, still the same big, still the same coil. The airflow I have cut down uh, two rows of holes. Don't know if you can see that. And there we go. Here you are. Come on, focus, focus, focus. Here you can see it. Right, and I am rocking it at 45, 45 watts on the swell. So two bandy bay products together, and. Uh, Having lots of fun with it, still having my juice in, which is the blueberry slush. Here we go. Blue ray slush, sorry, not blueberry slush. And uh, tastes delicious. But let's talk about this. There are a couple of things which I didn't like. I would call them nitpick points. They're certainly not deal breakers. First is the top cap. Why is it a screw on top cap? Um, I think the most comfortable and easiest way to put a top cap on is a bayonet. So I would use a bayonet. Um, they decided to have the screw top on. And the other nitpicky point I'm having is those holes where you put the coils in. I mentioned that down the down low. It's a sore point close to my heart. Uh, the problem is that it is made for coils which have been wound counter clockwise. If you wind your coils, let's let's take the coil winding coil. Here we go. If you take this thing, put it with your wire on and you wind it, you wind it clockwise. As a right handed person. I am a right handed person. That's how I wind my coils. Ninety percent of people on the earth are right handed people. That's how they wound their coils. Why having the holes counterclockwise? Have it for clockwise bounded coils. Coils you buy are ground mostly clockwise. Don't do that. Why have it counterclockwise? I don't get it. Right, ran over on that. So these are my two nitpicky points. Um, the screw top, which I think should have been bayonet, and the coil holes, which are uh, designed for counterclockwise coils, should be clockwise. Right. And that's about it. My The good points. Let's start on top. The drip tip. Awesome. Love this drip tip. Love a normal 10, 12 millimeter drip tip where you can use your lips around. Don't need to be afraid that you burn your lips or any of that. Actually, this can do with a little bit more heat. Put it up to 50. Oh. Number two, coiling. If you have your coils counterclockwise, easy as jam. Wicking. Well, it doesn't have the rim where you can put your uh, where you can put your cotton around it. And you know, they're, if I compare it with others, and obviously that's what we do. We compare it with other uh, similar uh, atomizers, and uh, let's uh, compare it with the Kalpi, which has a, a, a similar way of wicking. The Kalpi's wicking. Uh, little bays are too small so it's always she's a tricky wicker this one as you could see down below it's not difficult once you have wet your cotton you can just form it into those little holes and it sits perfectly and actually from i wicked it from the first time i didn't need to re-wick it now and then when you saw it now down low i was wicking it for the second time and it still wicks perfect no problem whatsoever uh, with the straight glass, it looks okay. With the bubble glass, it looks like a pregnant earthworm. But yeah, that's just how it is. So it's up to you if you need the extra capacity. Then obviously you need to put the bubble glass on. I think with the bubble glass, it has four and a half mil. Without the bubble glass, probably two and a half mil, which is not a lot. I'm the first one to agree. At the moment, I work from home. So that's not a problem I can refill at any time. Um, the airflow is nice. Let's put it fully open. Let's get close to the mic.
it's smooth it's not swooshy and that's it's not bad for a top airflow at all i close the two holes even get softer so i think the airflow is for a top airflow um, atomizer very smooth uh, it is not too loud and it works it just simply works now the most important part of course single coil atomizers they are not about the cloud chucking I'm certainly not about cloud chucking um, I don't do competitions or any of that uh, for me any atomizer, and this is why I also like mass to lung as much as I like direct lung, is about the flavor. Now, how is it for flavor? Well, well compared to my single coil atomizers, and I have not many, I have the Kelpie, I have the Destiny. And I, as far as a top flow is concerned, which we can do a direct, uh, a direct comparison, I have the intake. These are my single coil atomizers. And of the three, four with this one, this has the best flavor. It, it does. It does have the best flavor. It has a fantastic flavor. You can dial it in with the airflow and with the wattage. And if you put just a normal fuse clapton in there, you will have wonderful, wonderful flavor. And it even, you know, even some of my dual coils, you know, have to, you know, they, they certainly need to uh, perform very, very well to beat this. Um, so the nitpicky points, uh, the uh, juice fill, you have to screw that on it's not a bayonet and uh, your coils need to be counterclockwise in order to get them in but the pros are easy to coil easy to wick easy to take apart and and put back together again and it has fantastic flavor so if you are in line for a single coil etting and you are after flavor and you are you're looking for something which has top airflow or even airflow doesn't really matter but top airflow is in this case as far as i'm concerned is a bonus because i like top airflows because they are just mess free and easy to work with then certainly the kyla mini version 2 should be on your shopping list uh, christmas is around the corner put it on your wish list and let somebody buy it for you Simple as that. It's a great atomizer. But well, thanks very much for popping in. Hope you all enjoyed this. Hope you uh, got some information out of it. Uh, I wish you all the best and greetings from a spring Cape Town. Cheers.